I yearn to be locked in my house with my children so I can spend time with them. I'm spending all my time looking after the children of others, but I'm not having the time with my own children. It's a blessing and a curse, both at the same time. One of my first jobs was um, working on a violence reduction program with juvenile offenders at Paulsmore Prison. Um, and it was introducing the notion of play. And many of these children, as young as 12, 13, had never played in their lives. Um, some of them were just dead in the face. They, they'd committed crimes, they were caught, they were used to the prison life. And as we played with them on the green grass in the courtyard, you just watched them become children again. home for maternity leave where my third child was born um, and then came to Ihata Shelter as a volunteer to try and help um, create better systems and strengthen the gender-based violence response um, and I'm here 10 years later. I'm still here. Um, so we have multiple things for our clients. We, we work with them every day for 90 days in a 90-day program. It's life coaching, it's spiritual, psychological, um, financial, emotional, it deals with all sorts of things and it's, it's basically it's group work um, to strengthen um, our clients and teach them more about life. Um, we meet women who are psychologically abused, physically abused, emotionally abused. In the academy we teach them anything from table manners to um, public speaking, um, but all of our work essentially focuses on building stronger family units, building stronger individuals who can therefore build stronger families, who can therefore build stronger communities, who can then build stronger societies and ultimately a stronger nation. Interestingly, when COVID-19 kind of hit the the global scene, I think my first thoughts on, on the issue was we need to get the shelter safe and compliant and I need to get my children sorted. Um, what we did was we made sure we got the masks, the hand sanitizer and we also got some um, posters from one of our partner organizations um, and educated ourselves as a staffing team and then educated our clients about it and then lockdown which was very daunting. I mean you've got 22 women and almost 38 children in the shelter um, they need to be socially distanced but we have shared rooms in the back uh, and so I wasn't sure how we were going to do all of this and so we needed to quickly think up plans. Our operations manager Faisal Porter wrote some um, COVID protocols and policies very quickly and we started putting things in place and so I think our response was comprehensive and quick, concise. One of the challenges for us in the shelter is that the women want to get out and now and they, they you know they, they have cabin fever they want to be out and we're not allowing it at the moment because of the high risk you know somebody leaves and comes back COVID positive or with COVID symptoms and then you've infected you can infect everyone else in the shelter and so it's really a catch-22 situation to ensure one that our clients have all their basic human rights met and that all their needs are fulfilled and to keeping them indoors because of the risk to others and particularly the young children in the shelter. We've got babies as young as six months. We can't risk anything at this time. eight or nine years old and just watching my grandmothers um, speak of charity and both my maternal and paternal grandmothers were, were charitable women. Um, later on in my grandmother's life when I was an adult she would give me her pension and say buy what you think children in the community need um, and just get them to pray for me because she suffered with ill health. My paternal grandmother ran a soup kitchen after she retired uh, from the library. She ran a soup kitchen from her house so every Friday she would cook um, for the children of the community. and. Um, I think I was early on, I was ingratiated into um, the charity work. I will say that for as much as I love it, it can get incredibly frustrating, but it's an addiction. You get high off your work. It's, it's challenging, you know, you don't want to send a woman to the, to the street and create secondary victimization or further vulnerability, but you can't also risk everyone else who was here at the time of lockdown. And the challenge for us as, as shelter management is, do you turn the woman away and say, no, I'm sorry, you could be, you know, you could be asymptomatic and therefore risky to everyone in the shelter um, and she goes back to her perpetrator and gets killed? Or do we take her in and everyone else possibly gets infected and dies? So it's really not an easy thing. It's, it's the hardest thing for me because how do you look someone in the eye and say, I can't help you at this time? Mm -hmm.